Hey everyone, today's Quick Tip Tuesday, my room tone shortcut. I spoke about this a while ago and realized I had totally forgot to actually include it in a video. This technique I'm going to show you can save you so much time when it comes to editing your audio. I'll show you some editing tips that will help save time, set up a custom action for pasting room tone, and a few other things. So here's a session with a sample of dialogue in it. Notice how I created a region at the top? You don't need to do this, but it's incredibly helpful when labeling chapters. Also, if you double click the region, it'll select the entire region so you can render a time selection quickly. Now before we get into the custom action, I want to talk about editing. As you see here, I have two tracks in my session. The top track is my room tone, which is muted right now, just to get it out of the way for demonstration purposes. The second track is my book. Let's play it back. This is a tutorial on how to insert room tone with a custom action. Don't mind my exaggerated cadence, it's just for demonstration. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of dead space in between the phrases. Here, 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 at the tail, and in the beginning. Now, if you were going to edit this, you'd probably do something like this. You'd split here, you'd trim, you trim here, you trim the beginning, you trim the end. And you do it here, and here, and here, etc., etc., etc. Now think of how long that would take if it was a 10 hour audiobook. A long time? Yeah, probably. Let's undo that. There's got to be a faster way, right? Well, with Reaper, there usually is. What we use in Reaper is called dynamic split. How do we set it up? Well, with Reaper, it's really easy. The shortcut is just D on the keyboard. This is what dynamic split looks like. Now, in order to set it up, we need to uncheck at transients, make sure that when gate opens and when gate closes are both checked off. Now, here down at gate where it says threshold, this is where you got to be careful. If we increase it too high, it's going to cut the entire thing out. If we make it too low, it's not going to cut anything out. So we have to adjust it. Mine usually works well around negative 45-ish. See, so it's going to remove these spaces and leave the dialogue. Under Action to Perform, we want to make sure it says Split Selected Items. And we want to make sure that Remove Silent Areas is checked off. I also include Click Off the Fade Pad. This will put a fade at the beginning and end of each item. Click split. And now we've gotten rid of all that empty space in between. But as you can see, we got a problem. Digital black, right? And we learned from the other video that I have that we need to fill in the digital black with room tone. But we also know that to paste that in manually takes forever. So let's set up a custom action to do it all at once with just one click. Now, before I get into this, I'd like to give James Romick a shout out. Uh, there are a lot of ways to do this, but I find his version is one of the best. He's a master with Reaper and with voiceover. Also note that you may need to add the SWS extensions to your Reaper if you don't already have them. These are free and it includes thousands of actions and plugins. There's a bunch of tutorials on how to do that if you haven't already installed them. Now, let's go to the Actions menu. Click New Action. Create Custom Action. Let's call this something like Room Tone Paste.
Now, as before, we know that with custom actions, you can do almost anything, and it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the options Reaper has. But we need to remember to take it one step at a time and keep it simple. We know that we want to fill in the gaps on our audio track with the room tone. So, since we know that the room tone is on track one, we first need to select track one. So, to do this, let's type in select only track one. Next, I add toggle ripple editing per track. This will shut ripple editing off if you have it on. So now we want to select the room tone. So select, select all items in track. Next, we're going to type in transport, go to end of project. This will move the cursor to the end of your book. The next step we're going to add is trim right edge of item to edit cursor. Now, we need to have the room tone fill in all those gaps we created. So let's add move items down one track. And finally, toggle ripple editing per track. This will turn ripple editing back on. Now you see the action up here. We can add a shortcut to it. Let's go add, let's say the number four on the numeric keypad. Okay, close this, and let's see if it worked. Type the number four. Cool, right? Not only did it paste in the room tone, but it added a crossfade at every little split. Let's listen back to make sure it sounds okay. This is a tutorial on how to insert room tone with a custom action. Okay, it does sound okay, but I did notice something. The room tone itself is a little bit loud. Okay, it looks like my room tone is a bit louder than I'd want. Audible and ACX both require a minimum of negative 60 decibels, and right now I'm above that at about negative 40 something. Normally I would fix this using RX by Isotope, but since that's an investment that you might have to make and you may not have that, I'll show you how to reduce some of that noise in Reaper. We'll pull up a plugin called Reaffer. It's in the Cocos library and it's right here. Reaffer, F-I-R. Now we're going to change edit to precise, FFT size to 1024, and mode from EQ, change it to subtract. Now when we play this little noise section and we click automatically build noise profile, okay, so what that does is that it's capturing this noise. Now when we uncheck that and we play it back, now my noise has dropped below 60. Let's see how it sounds. This is a tutorial on how to insert room tone. You know, that actually sounds pretty good. Let's give it another listen. This is a tutorial on how to insert room tone. And there you have it. 
We went over some new editing techniques. We created a custom action for room tone pasting. And I showed you how to use a little bit of noise reduction to clean up your audiobooks. If it works for you, that's great. Let me know in the comments. If there are any other topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time.